Hey guys, Logan from the Knights of Horror here, your collector of the channel. Today we're going to dive more into my uh, physical media collection. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, m some of my favorite releases, and uh, they are from Scream Factory. Uh, if you don't know, Scream Factory is a company that puts out collector's editions of movies that probably wouldn't get collector's editions, or even Blu-rays for that matter, on, you know, uh, like kind of cult, cult classic movies, um, you know, like movies that Universal or Sony or big companies probably wouldn't touch. Um, not all of them. Uh, but there's a good majority here that have a niche following, and uh, Screen Factory is cool enough to put them out. Screen Factory, uh, they put out amazing, uh, amazing collections. So I would recommend following them on social media and looking out for their next uh, for their next releases. But let's go down to uh, let's go down my list of releases and see what I got. This is actually a recent release that I got. I'm sorry, not a recent release. It's a re it's a recent purchase I got from an old Screen Factory release of the Fun House. Um, this was a blind buy for me, man. Uh, one of Toby Hooper's first movies, you know, Toby Hooper, Poltergeist, Texas Chainsaw. Um, I had never seen it, but I, it's out of print now, and I got a good deal on it, so I jumped on it, and I turned it on uh, literally yesterday for the first time, and I enjoyed it. It's really freaking weird. and it's, it's wacky, but it's a lot of fun, man. Uh, what's cool about Scream Factory as well is uh, their collector's editions, you know, they put out all kinds of cool special features, but they also put the old poster art in the inside. It's reversible. So you get the newly commissioned art on the outside, and uh, you get the uh, original poster on the inside. So you get the best of both worlds if you can get the slipcover. On these older releases, these slipcovers are harder to find. Honestly, these some of these slipcovers you're about to see are worth more than the movies themselves. So uh, I've hunted for these. So And if you can get it as a combo, uh, great. Uh, this is another recent release that I got along with the Fun House, Terror Train, one of Jamie Lee Curtis's first films after she did Halloween in the Fog. And I believe she even did Prom Night before this, if I'm not mistaken. It was either Prom Night and then and then Terror Train, or Terror Train and then Prom Night. But anyway, she did. I know in her early career she did four horror movies, and this was one of them. And uh, this is pretty much Halloween taking place on a train. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun little slasher, kind of a mystery. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, out of print now as well. All right, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite sequels when it comes to the slasher genre, Psycho 2. Uh, I, I love this movie, man. Uh, but don't believe, yeah, it doesn't have uh, this. It's very rare when Screen Factor doesn't put out a reversed art, a reversed cover. But I believe that's because this is pretty much on the slip cover. You have the original. Uh, cover, but anyways, uh, Psycho 2 is really good. It's an underrated sequel, in my opinion. I I, uh, I know that um, I'm gonna get a lot of crap for this, and I love the original, but I think I enjoy the second one just all just a, it's the hair more than the original. It's pretty interesting, and the guy who wrote this is Tom Holland, who directed uh, Child's Play, Fright Night. Uh, it's a good one. If you get a chance, check it out. All right, going down, we got a classic werewolf movie. This is my second. Uh, favorite werewolf movie, and it's The Howling, directed by Joe Dante, uh, who did Gremlins, uh, just fantastic director. But uh, yeah, it's a good movie, man. The Howling, um, you know, all just filled with all kinds of cool special features. A uh, ton of fun, ton of fun. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Okay, another werewolf film that I love. Um, it's. Uh, this is an English film, uh, Dog Soldiers. Very underestimated and just unheard of movie. Um, very cool, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, but um, it's about a group of soldiers that are being attacked by a clan of freaking werewolves. And it's the werewolves in this movie are great. They're not CGI, they're like practical effect. They're, you know, full on makeup costume werewolves. It's, it's a fun movie. Okay, up next we got a movie called Class of 1984. Uh, not really horror, but you you could kind of put it up there. It's just it's it's a really dark drama. It's kind of a thriller. Um, it's about a new teacher who uh, teaches at a at a high school, and uh, the kids, the, the bullies at this high school are just freaking like sociopaths. Um, and the teacher, I won't spoil it anything for you, but uh, the teacher goes after these. Uh, kids for some revenge, and it's pretty satisfying at the end. I highly recommend getting through this one, man. It's a good movie. It's, uh, it's got it has Roddy McDowell in it, who uh, played uh, Peter Vincent in Fright Night. So 
I recommend checking it out. Oh, also, I can't, oh, okay. Class of 1984, I can't, I, uh, I can't forget this. It's got Michael J. Fox in it, who, uh, of course, is uh, Marty McFly in one of my favorite films ever, Back to the Future. Um, it's one of his first films, I believe. He's really young in this. So if you're a Michael J. Fox fan, check that one out. Up next, this movie I paid a ton of money for. It's called Dolls. It's so out of print, and this slipcover is so freaking hard to find. Um, Dolls, man, this... This movie is creepy, uh, but it's it's kind of campy. It's creepy, campy fun. Um, it's t it's I I blind. I, this is the crazy collector I am. I had never seen the movie, and I paid a ton of, a ton of money for it. I won't tell you how much, but I paid a ton of money for it just because I knew it was so hard to get, and I had never seen it. Luckily, I enjoyed it when I watched it. Could you imagine if I hated the movie after spending that kind of money? Uh, I guess I could have flipped it, but anyways, it, it's a fun movie. Uh, it's, the guy who directed this is Stuart Gordon which we're going to get into another one of his films coming up here. Uh, Stuart Gordon is, I think, most known for uh, that movie Reanimator, a uh, cult classic there. Uh, rest in peace, Stuart Gordon. Uh, this is one of my favorite Stuart Gordon movies, From Beyond. H.P. Lovecraft inspired uh, movie, From Beyond. It's really freaking weird, super, super weird. Um, it's got a lot of the same cast from Reanimator. A lot of the same crew too. It was like the same people that worked on Reanimator after they did that. They came and did From Beyond. Yeah, you have Jeffrey Combs in this uh, classic cult B movie actor. Uh, it's, this movie's a lot of fun. Uh, good, good, good sci-fi weird creature film. Uh, check it out. Up next, we got a favorite of mine, Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead's a fun one, man. Uh, I, I, I love Pumpkinhead. Uh, the sequels weren't that great, but uh, it, th this movie, I remember watching it uh, when I was way too young. Uh, it's got some good effects in it. It was filmed at the same place that they filmed uh, Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter. That same cabin that they used in that was used in this movie. You have Lance Hendrickson, and Lance Hendrickson is one of my favorite actors of all time. But anyways, Pumpkinhead, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Okay, another one. It's not my favorite of my uh, collection. A lot of people love it. It's just... It's not it's not one I watch all the time, and that is uh, Night of the Demons. It's a cult classic. Um, it's got some fun moments in it, for sure. It's like I said, it's just not one that I watch all the time. And uh, yeah, it's uh, this is hard to find. The slipcover is hard to find now. Uh, but yeah, it takes place on Halloween night about a bunch of kids who uh, sneak into an abandoned house, I believe, that is supposed to be haunted, and they get possessed one by one. So yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, this one's a special one. Day of the Dead. This is probably my favorite zombie movie ever. And yes, I like it more than Dawn of the Dead and more than Night of the Living Dead. I just love this movie. I love the film score. It's guy. It, it has Greg Nicotero playing a character in this. You know, he's not just doing the effects in this. He's like he's acting in this, which is really cool. Uh, it's got some crazy freaking scenes. Like there's a scene where this dude's head gets ripped off and he's screaming as his head's getting ripped off. And the way that it's so disturbing to watch, but it's it's cool. It's cool at the same time, in a really weird way. Um, his head's head's getting weird. It's getting ripped off as he's screaming, and uh, uh, his vocal cords are being pulled, and the pitch just gets higher. It's really crazy. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, up next, another zombie movie, The Return of the Living Dead. Uh, pretty, pretty comical kind of comedy horror. Uh, a lot of one-liners in this movie. Totally fun. Total classic. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead. Ton of fun. All right, up next, we have a movie called Night of the Creeps. Lots of fun. You got Tom Atkins in this one. Uh, Tom Atkins did Creep Show. He was in The Fog. He just, you know, too many to list. But yeah, uh, lots of one-liners in this one as well. Ton of fun, man. It's a it's been a while since I, I've seen this, so I don't know if I'll give it a well enough summary but it's about these kids at a college who uh, are pretty much there's these little slugs that came from outer space and these slugs are getting inside of people's mouths and pretty much taking over their bodies as zombies and yeah it's it sounds weird but it's it's pretty awesome so check it out all right up next we got the remake of the blob the blob man this is a fun one uh ton of ton of fun yeah you it has 
Bill Mosley in it, of all people, just in like one little scene, which is totally crazy. If you don't know Bill Mosley, he's Chop Top and Texas Chainsaw 2. You know, you, you see him in Devil's Rejects, you know, House of a Thousand Corpses, classic actor there. Uh, I believe this is uh, down the list of one of his first movies. So yeah, the remake of The Blob, it's a fun one. All right, one of my favorite anthologies, Trick or Treat. Man, I, I, I love this film and I love that it got the Screen Factory treatment. Uh, I love the slip cover on this one. That artwork is crazy awesome. Yeah, man, you got all kinds of cool special features on this, and it's the definitive version to own right now. So, check that one out if you haven't seen it. This is a new release that I got from Screen Factory, I believe, last month. I've been waiting for a Blu ray of this to come out in general. It was on DVD for a little while with no special features, and that is uh, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. I, I never really watched the show. Um, but uh, the, the movie is pretty freaking good when it comes to anthology I think it's super I think it's when it comes to anthologies it's not a lot of people think about this one uh, it's got some good segments in it and it's got uh, what's your face from the band Blondie uh, the singer uh, Debbie Harry I think yeah Debbie Harry uh, yeah it's a fun one man check it out oh I, I can't put that one down without showing the original cover I love that original cover of Tales from the Dark Side it's a pretty classic well-known cover. I needed to share that. Alright, going down, we got a favorite of mine here. I love Tales from the Crypt, the show. So I got the movie here, Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Uh, love this movie, man. It's so much fun. It's it's such a fun movie. This, uh, funny, um, I always knew what Tales from the Crypt was. I knew who the Crypt Keeper was growing up. My dad liked Tales from the Crypt, but I never really sat down and watched the show. So I, about a year ago, I watched this movie for the first time and I had not seen the show and I loved it. You don't have to see the show to enjoy this movie. It's a standalone. Um, it's, it's just a great movie and this, I love the movie so much I dove into, into the show Tales from the Crypt and I loved it. So I recommend that one if you haven't seen it. Okay. Up next, we got an anthology that's one of my absolute favorites, and that is the Screen Factory Creep Show. This is a cool box edition that you can still buy. It's not limited edition. You can still buy it. Um, it's so much fun, man. Um, in the inside here, you got the Blu-ray. I love that comic book art on the Blu-ray cover. This movie's loaded with features, and it comes with a cool little booklet you can check out, man. But uh. Yeah, it's a really awesome release, and uh, I think I, this was $35 when it released, so it's probably gone down in price a little bit, so get it before it's out of print, because Screen Factory guys, they go, they go out of print. Some of these go out of print really fast, so jump on them. This is an this is an anthology movie that really not a lot of people know about. A friend of mine showed it to me because he knew how much I liked anthologies, and it's a movie called Nightmares. Uh, this didn't get a slipcover when it came out. All of my slipcover, all of my Screen Factories have slipcovers. If they came out with a slipcover, this one didn't release with a, with a slipcover. Um, I think they only put slipcovers out for collectors editions. So um, you know, they, the features on this are kind of minimal, so they didn't really deem it as a collector's edition. Uh, but it's you know, this movie's so out of print in general, it's like the best version you're going to own of this movie. I don't even know if there's a DVD version out there. There might be, but this is the definitive version of Nightmares. It's a cool anthology film. Check it out. Okay, up next we've got a Shout Factory. It's not Screen Factory, it's a Shout Select Collector's Edition is what this is called. And Tom Hanks in The Burbs. Fun, fun little mystery movie. It's, it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it's horror. It, it falls along the lines, uh, but yeah, it's a fun movie to watch around October. So you got Carrie Fisher in it as well. It's a lot of fun, man. I love this movie. It was shot all, uh, pretty much the entire movie was shot on the back lot in, at Universal Studios. Okay, up next, one of my favorite Stephen King movies, Misery. Misery, man. Uh, Kathy Bates in this one is creepy as hell, and uh, she's just awesome. <laughs> she is awesome. And God, what's his name? The guy that played the dad in Elf, uh, James uh, Can. James Can. He's great in this one too. He played the dad in Elf. You'd recognize him if you watched it. Uh, it's a fun movie, man. It's about a writer who uh, gets into an accident and uh, wakes up, and uh, the person taking care of him is his biggest fan. He's a writer, and he writes this book called Misery. And uh, Kathy Bates is his biggest fan, and she's freaking crazy. So check it out. Another. Uh, Stephen King one we've got up here is a werewolf classic. 
Silver Bullet. I believe this came out last year. Scream Factory's released a Silver Bullet. It's pretty cool, man. It's a cool release. Um, I, I like this movie. It's not my favorite werewolf movie, but it's it's a lot of fun. It has it has freaking what's his name in it? Um, Gary Busey. Gary Busey's in this one, and I can't get enough of Gary Busey, man. That guy's fun to watch. Um, up next, we've got a recent. Uh, we got a recent one that I picked up. Uh, not a recent release, but uh, new to my collection. Uh, we got Firestarter. You can get Firestarter, uh, just the Blu-ray doesn't come with a slip, but you can get Firestarter at Walmart right now for like 12 bucks. So uh, if you see it, pick it up. Yeah, man, uh, it's got some cool features on it. But you, you, you have Drew Barrymore in one of her first movies after uh, after she did E.T. So uh, Firestarter, which uh, really inspired one of my favorite shows, Stranger Things. So a big influence on that show. Up next, we got a movie by Clive Barker. Total classic. You know, Clive Barker did Hellraiser. And uh, this is Nightbreed. If you haven't seen Nightbreed, check it out. It's pretty much, what I, the way I describe this movie to people, it's like if X-Men was directed by Clive Barker. This is what you would get. It's awesome. So if you like kind of, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're superheroes, but it's kind of, it's like, it's X-Men where, like, you know, people hate, hate mutants. Um... And this one, the mutants are monsters. The outside world hates these monsters, and uh, they, the government comes in and tries to intervene. And it's pretty cool. It's kind of an action thriller. Uh, it's awesome, man. And David Cronenberg weirdly plays the villain in this. And David Cronenberg is known for he's a movie, he's a director. He's known for the remake of The Fly. He did Videodrome, uh, Scanners. You know, just so many movies. But yeah, he, uh, David Cronenberg is an actor in this. Uh, Good movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Up next, we kind of have a guilty pleasure. I've only watched it once. This was a blind buy. It wasn't my favorite, but I love the artwork on it. And yeah, I bought a movie for the artwork. Uh, Hell Knight. Um, kind of cool. It uh, has Linda Blair, I think. Yeah, Linda Blair, who was in The Exorcist. Uh, kind of a cool movie. It's about, I believe it's about um, a couple of kids who are dared or they lose a bet or something. and. They're staying the night in a, in a haunted mansion type of a place, and uh, there was a serial killer or something that lived there, and uh, he comes back and tries to kill him. He's like, get the hell out of my house. Um, all right. So going down, we're, we're almost to the bottom. We're almost there, but not there yet. Okay, we got a classic here, one of the, main, one of the few mainstream movies that... Uh, Screen Factory has put out, and that is Child's Play. And I believe Child's Play, just as of recently by Screen Factory, this release went out of print. Um, so uh, if you can get a hold of it for a decent price, jump on it because it's just going to go up in price, man. Yeah, Child's Play. Tom Holland classic. Um, I, I, I like the first Child's Play a lot. I'm not a huge Chucky fan. I'm not a, not a huge fan of the entire franchise as a whole. I like the first three. Um, definitely the first one's the best, but uh, yeah, man, the first three are fun movies. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna kind of dive into some cursed films here. These are super out of print, uh, very out of print. I bought these at a ridiculously low price like a year or two ago, and then like literally like a month later they went out of print, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, and that is Poltergeist 2. I love Poltergeist 2. Um, it's it's dark, man. It's a dark movie, um, but it's fun, man. And then uh, you got uh, Poltergeist 3. This is a cursed movie, man. If you watch cursed films on Shutter, they'll do a segment all on it and why it's cursed. And of course, you know, unfortunately, our lead actress passed away. And uh, yeah, it took kind of a big effect on the the production of this movie. So. Watch that uh, Cursed Films thing if you want to learn more about it, but that release is hard to find. But, you know, as, as the collector, I felt I needed it. All right, a movie that I will defend until I die. There's a few of those, and one of this, this gets so much heat, man. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I love the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love the remake, too. I love the 2003 remake, but I will always say Texas 2 is my favorite Texas Chainsaw film. And a lot of people freaking hate this movie. And I and I, I can understand why. And I can't really tell you too much why on why I like it. It must have been the, the experience I had when I was little. I watched this movie flipping around on the TV when I was like 10. 
and I should not have been watching this, but like I had no idea what I was watching. There was just some, I won't describe the scene, uh, but there was just some weirdness going on in this movie and some dude with this chainsaw. I'm like, what the hell is this? And later come to find out it was Texas Chainsaw too. So, you know, it's just a fun, kooky movie. It's horror comedy. So a lot of people were turned off by, you know, the first one being such a classic and then uh, the second one being such an opposite film. But I, I love it. It's so weird, man. It's so weird. But uh, the Scream Factory is not out of print. And it's very expensive to find. So if you can get your hands on it, man, jump on it. Okay, next is... Uh, it's not my favorite release, honestly. I'm, it's another one that is popular and a lot of people dig it. Um, based off of a great video game. Nothing to do with the video game. The film, eh, it's not my cup of tea. It's okay. It's not bad. And that's Silent Hill. Um, but I bought it for the artwork. I just... I loved the artwork on that. Um, I, I love the artwork and I believe when I bought this I think I had a faint memory of a couple of scenes in the movie so you know I wouldn't say the movie was one that I remembered all too much so I bought it and hoping I would really like it you know watching it as an adult and uh, yeah it just it was okay you know there's a ton of CGI and if you know me I'm not you know huge into overdone CGI but yeah it, it was enjoyable definitely it was uh, it was a labyrinth of a movie that's for sure but anyways, going down here, uh, we got Jeepers Creepers, uh, the first one. Don't have the second one, but I do have the first one. This one, uh, I won't talk too much about. There's some controversy with the director that I won't really get into. Um, you know, don't agree with that guy's life decisions, uh, not for that director whatsoever. If you want to do some research as to why, you can do that on your own. Um, but I don't feel guilty owning this movie knowing what this guy did just because I bought it secondhand and I'm like, eh, I'm not putting my money into his pocket. Uh, I'm giving it to a fellow collector who's selling it to me. So sure, I'll, I'll, I'll own it. And it's now out of print. So it's it's pretty expensive and I got it at a decent price. And I can enjoy it for the cast and crew that were involved and put the time and effort into the movie. You know, but the director, eh, that's a whole other story. But it's a good movie, man. Jeepers Creepers is a classic. Um, I, I don't have the second one. I think the second one's pretty good too. Okay, up next, Candyman. Man, the, I love the original, man. Uh, this is one that I hadn't seen in a long time until I bought this release a couple months ago, and I rewatched it, and I loved it. Uh, you got Tony Todd, man. Just a, a great actor. Um, really cool release. It's loaded. It's two discs. Absolutely awesome. Great movie. Up next we have a Wes Craven favorite of mine, Nightmare on Elm Street director, Scream. I think that's what he's widely known for, but uh, this is the movie that a lot of people forget about. I would say it's my second favorite Wes Craven film, The People Under the Stairs. I, I love this movie a ton. Um, I, this was a blind buy. I didn't know what I was getting into and I'm so glad I got it because it was just awesome. Um, oh yeah, it's a funny story about this. I, it has a reversible sleeve on it, but I didn't I didn't reverse it only because, unfortunately, I got an edition where the barcode was hole punched. So when you open it on the inside, unfortunately, in in the reversed artwork, you get the hole punch right in the middle of it. And the reason for that is on some of these releases, they're copies that were being reviewed and they weren't, you know, meant to be sold. So and I bought this from a second party, or I'm sorry, I bought it from a third party on Amazon, not knowing what I was getting, and it ended up being a, 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 a review copy, you know, whatever. I got it for like 10 bucks, so I really can't complain, you know, for a Screen Factory, but maybe one of these days I'll have to pick up a copy that doesn't have a freaking hole in it. But yeah, People Under the Stairs, it's a ton of fun if you like Wes Craven. Uh, next one is another Wes Craven favorite. Uh, a lot of people forget about this movie as well. The Serpent and the Rainbow really cool movie when it comes to voodoo it's based on a true story it's such a cool movie you you uh what's his name is in this uh bill pullman yeah bill pullman's in this um dark movie man it's a fun one if you haven't seen it i would totally recommend you watch this it's um i, I won't get into spoilers it's really trippy to watch but this it's based on a true story this this guy he's an anthropologist and he travels to haiti and uh, they're experimenting with this stuff, this powder stuff that poisons you and kills you and pretty much brings you back from the dead as a zombie. It's, it's a pretty freaking weird concept and it's based on a true story. <laughs> so uh, check it out. It's a dark movie, man. Wes Craven's got some good ones. Um, 
this is a guilty pleasure that I bought as a blind buy at FYE. Uh, girlfriend and I brought it home and it's a pile of freaking turds, but we love it. And I, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, it's movie's so, it's one of those movies that's so bad you can't you can't turn away from it. Like there's there's a part in this movie where uh I'm, you know the the movie's about this kid who was traumatized as a child uh because of, uh, this guy dressed up as Santa Claus killed his parents. And uh, so Christmas is a hard time for him. One year he just snaps and puts on the Santa suit and just starts going on a murder spree. And uh what he says before he kills people, he yells naughty and then kills them. It's we were dude, we were just cracking up when we first watched this. But yeah, it is one of those movies that's just it's a very badly great movie it's just and I, I, I love that that original poster too it's kind of cool but yeah guys uh, Silent Night Deadly Night uh, I won't recommend it to you because you'll probably hate it but I'm also kind of recommending it to you so check it out it's a lot of fun uh, so some good Christmas horror uh, another Christmas horror movie that is not comedy and is more on the serious note this is a great movie the original Black Christmas this movie, fun fact for you, a couple fun facts for you, um, it inspired John Carpenter to create Halloween. Uh, this movie really inspired John to direct Halloween. Um, a lot of the, you know, when, when you're when you're watching the original Halloween, a lot, you know, there's a few scenes in that where you're in the first person point of view of Michael Myers. It takes a lot of influence from this one. The killer in this, you, you never really see the killer. It's always first person shots and him, you know, walking and going after his victims in first person. And another fun fact is the guy who directed this freaking movie, and I was just tripping because I couldn't believe who I saw directed this movie. The guy who directed this movie, his name is Bob Clark. You know who Bob Clark is? Uh, he directed an, another Christmas movie, but it's not horror. It's a Christmas classic that most people watch every year, and that's A Christmas Story with Ralphie. You know, you'll shoot your eye out. The guy who could make a fam who made a family beloved film made a super super dark you know gruesome uh, Christmas movie so yeah it's it's worth a watch. This is a great one as well. We're pretty much at the bottom here, and that is uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is a remake, uh, I believe, in the 70s. I don't remember which year. I don't have my glasses on. Um, 70, 78, 79. Uh, good movie, man. Uh, it's got a, it's got an awesome cast. Um, you know, it's about, you know, aliens and they're taking over humans. Uh, it's a great movie. You, you have Donald, Donald Sutherland in this, who was in Hunger Games. Um, you have Leonard Nimoy from Star Trek in this, which is kind of cool. And you have, um, oh, oh my God, it's, I'm, I'm, oh, Jeff Goldblum. Thank you, back cover for giving me his name. I was gonna kick myself for not knowing. Who Jeff Goldblum's name. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum's in this. Awesome movie, guys. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. All right, we're at the bottom of the list here, but uh, up next, uh, other than this Halloween box set, we have two more box sets for you, and that is uh, the Amityville Horror box set. This is the original ha Amityville trilogy. Uh, I loved the first one. Um, I still love the first one, uh, but I, I loved it as a kid. Uh, scared the crap out of me as a kid, and then when I was a teenager, my dad and I didn't know that they actually made sequels to these, and we loved the first one, so we popped on Amityville 2. And uh, let me tell you, this movie's freaking weird, especially to watch with your parents. It's it's uh, got some incestuous scenes in it, <laughs> so I don't recommend watching it with the family. Uh, but it's got some entertainment value there, but the first one, man, you can't beat it. Amityville 3D is utter cheese, but, you know, if, if, if you're into that, you might enjoy it. So Amityville... And then uh, we got the Omen collection, man. You got all five of the Omen movies here. You got the first four plus the remake. It's a very cool looking box set. I love the artwork on this. So if you like the Omen movies, check it out. I love the first two. I don't remember the last time I watched the other ones. I remember watching the remake and thought it was all right. But uh, the third and the fourth one, I don't really remember all of that well. I know, I own the box set and I haven't watched them. But yeah, the first two are great though. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We've got uh, we, we've got more Scream Factories to come. As a collector, I'm you know constantly on the hunt for more. My collection's never complete. And I kind of lied. That wasn't all of my Scream Factories. There's quite a few that I did save. And uh, that is for my next video that I'm going to put out for you. Uh, it's my John Carpenter 
uh, film collection and uh, if you're a Screen Factory collector you know that there's a ton of John Carpenter Screen Factories but I wanted to save those Screen Factories for that video so keep an eye out for a couple more Screen Factory releases and a couple that are even signed by John Carpenter. So stay tuned for that and uh, we also have a, uh, a Screen Factory coming in the mail that uh, I've been highly anticipating and that is the Friday the 13th box set. I've been waiting for that sucker for a while. It's coming in the next uh, couple weeks, I believe, and uh, you know I'm going to be opening that and filming it for you guys as soon as I get it. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.